Okay, we've spent a few weeks looking at the major behavioral biases that impact our investing and our wealth building. So let's round things off with just three more. Yes, let's. So far, we've talked about self-attribution bias, anchoring, hindsight bias, confirmation bias. I want to just round things off here with just three more behavioral biases that we bring to bear on our investing, which can be an insidious threat to our wealth building success. I'm going to go over these in fairly rapid fire fashion. So let's put five minutes on the clock down here. Say a quick thank you to my friends at Seven Investment Management down here for continuing to sponsor the show. And let's crack on. First up, we have overconfidence bias. Now, this is closely linked to self attribution bias, of course. And it means that we can overestimate our judgment or the quality of the information we have. Maybe we think we can predict downturns and rallies in stock markets, or that we have some kind of advantage because of a tip that we got from somebody in the know. What this tends to lead to is over trading because we're constantly trying to realign our actually very unpredictable portfolio to what whatever our views are right now. And the cost of that overtrading can eat into future returns, probably won't lead to additional returns to cover the cost of the trading, not just in dealing fees, but also for being out of the market as you are making switches between holdings. Overconfidence bias also leads us to forget when we got things wrong. Convenient, really. Next up, loss aversion bias. Now, there's a famous study by Kahneman and Tversky, which showed that people feel the pain of loss roughly twice as much as they feel the pleasure of an equivalent sized gain. What this leads to, of course, is poor decisions because we try to avoid that pain of loss. Now, this can manifest in checking our portfolio too frequently, but ironically, that actually leads to an amplification of the loss aversion feelings. Why? Because we're far more likely to see a short term loss than a long term loss when we're investing. If we're investing for the long term and not really checking our portfolio much in the meantime, because who cares about short term losses, then we won't see losses over time, we'll just see gains. But if you're checking it every week or every month, you're more likely to see short term losses. And that leads to those feelings of loss aversion again, and can lead to bad decisions, piling out of the market at the wrong time, shifting into cash, that sort of thing. Loss aversion bias also leads people to take less than ideal levels of risk. You'll often hear me talk that risk is a function of time scale primarily. So if you're invested for a very long time, you should take risk, even if maybe naturally you're not that confident with it, you should take it because the market will look after you over time. But if you're really impacted by this bias against loss aversion, chances are you'll take more risk than you could do than you ought to. And you know, you'll have less money as a result. Finally, we have endowment bias. This is where we tend to place a higher value on assets we already own, rather than assets that we don't own, but we do have the means to acquire. To put it another way, we can hold on to assets that we already have, rather than if we were looking at it in the cold light of day, we would probably never touch it with a barge pole but because we own it, we feel better about it. I've told the story quite a few times of the client who had six figures worth of money in the shares of the company he'd worked for all his life and how that really didn't end well because it turns out they were a pretty sucky investment. Inherited shares are also a classic example of this. We hold on to them just because we already own them or for sentimental reasons, whereas in the cold light of day, we wouldn't go anywhere near them. Property even, sometimes we inherit a property in an area that we would never buy in, but we hold it because, well, it's a good asset or whatever. Well, it might not be. You need to see it as an asset in the cold light of day. Is it a good one? Yes or no? Sell it or hold it. We need to really try not to be emotional about assets or investments. Strive to be as ruthlessly logical as possible. Try to see the utter nonsense in some of these biases, just how illogical they are. Not easy, but not impossible either. Okay, we're going to move on, I think, from these investment behaviors and deal with a few different subjects over the next few weeks. So thanks for watching this one. I'll see you in next week's 5-Minute Friday. <laughs>